Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In the previous videos, we um, went through the installation of Raspbian using Noobs, and I showed you how to create the SD card and also how to boot up and configure and do some initial testing of Raspbian on it. And this was using Raspbian 1.5.0, which is currently called Jesse. Now, a few people have asked, well, you know, I don't want to use noobs and can I do it simpler uh, or in a different way? And the answer is yes, you can. And so what I thought I'd do is put together a very quick video, and this may be one of my shortest one yet, um, just to show you how to do it without using noobs, but still just focused on Raspbian. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to download Raspbian 1.5.0. Um, I actually already have it downloaded, but I've, I've, uh, this is the page, the www.raspberrypi.org slash downloads, and you want to pick Raspbian this time instead of Noobs for the download. So we just click that. Now you've got three choices here. You've got Raspbian Wheezy, which is the older distro, as you can see, May 2015. We have the Raspbian Jesse of November 2015. Um, and we have a Raspbian Jesse Lite. Now, for most of you, the Raspbian Jesse, the full-blown one, is the one you'll probably want to use because it comes with the games and the programming things uh, all installed and everything else. I haven't looked yet to see what is or is not included in the Lite. The difference is that the Raspbian Jesse is about uh, just over a gigabyte download, and the Lite is 300 odd megabytes, so much, much quicker. But if all you want is a basic framework to then add your own custom uh, programs and things like that to it, then perhaps the Jesse Lite would be the one that works for you. Either way, the process is pretty much the same. So you come into this file, this folder on uh, the website, and just download either the zip or the torrent, whichever you prefer. Uh, you just click download, and it'll start doing the download here. Now I already have it down, so I'm just going to kill this download, uh, cancel. And once it is downloaded, you need to create image on an SD card. And what you use for that is a program uh, called Win32 Disk Manager, which is, uh, you can get, just Google it. In fact, if I bring up a browser right here, um, you just Google Win32 Disk Imager. And just I usually just get things from SourceForge, is where I go. Uh, and you can just download it and run it. So when you run that, what you will end up with is, uh, let me just bring up the program and show you. Okay, so here it is. This is the program once you start running it, Win32 Disk Imager. And what you do is you just browse to the folder. Now, you, Once you've downloaded the um, image, of course, you need to unzip it or extract it out from the torrent, you know, depending on how it comes down. Uh, the one I downloaded was the zip file, so I extracted it into here. And here it is, uh, the November 21st, 2015 Raspbian Jesse image. You just select that. You would then pick your um, SD card, which in this case is F, and that's what mine is. Now, I'm not going to start writing this one because I've got a different SD card in. So anyway, once you've done that, you pick your image file, you pick your destination SD card, and then you just click on write. And that's all you have to do. It may take a few minutes to write because obviously it's writing a whole gigabyte or more of image to this. In fact, once you've unzipped it, it may even be near a four gig because it's a copy of the whole um, SD, four gig SD card. Now I'm, I wrote it onto a 16 gig. So there is an extra step that you have to do to expand the file system to make all of the SD card available back to Raspbian again. But once you've done the write and then, you know, it'll just say it's completed and you just exit, uh, take the, uh, eject the SD card out of your, uh, reader writer and put it into the Raspberry Pi and boot up. And uh, that's really much all there is to it as far as creating the SD card for the non-noobs version of Raspbian Lite. As you can see, slightly different to using noobs, where with noobs all you do is you format the SD card and copy files across to it. In this case, you're using an actual image of Raspbian with everything already there. Now, the actual boot up process is going to be far, far quicker, as you will, will uh, see any second now. But you will have to do a little more post configuration uh, once it's booted up. So this is going to be the first time boot of a Raspbian image that was uh, put onto an SD card using Win32 Disk Imager. So it's not using noobs. And I want to just show you that right from uh, just imaging it with the right tools, um, you can minimize the um, install and everything else by bypassing noobs. If you're an absolute beginner or you want selections of OSs, 
then by all means continue to use noobs. But if you want Raspbian directly, then once you put it onto the SD card, it should just boot right up to an operational system. So let's just power this up right now and we'll see what happens. So there it is booting. I've got a slightly low voltage on my power supply by the look of it. Uh, it's just booting right into Raspbian. All right, so a few seconds, it's come, come right up. Now I have a uh, regular, not the official Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi adapter. Um, I also have it hardwired to an Ethernet cable. I have a wireless mouse and a hardwired Apple keyboard connected. So the first thing to see here is the network, if it's working, which it is, so there's nothing to do there. I'm just going to connect to this network. I'm just going to pause it while I put my password in. Okay, so that's now the Wi-Fi working, so nothing I had to do there. And so I've shown you when I did the noobs install that the official Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi adapter works right off the bat. This one is a uh, different little black Wi-Fi adapter. I'll try and find out where I got it from and link it into the description. Uh, and it's worked right off the bat too. So I know under Raspbian it's fairly straightforward to get Wi-Fi adapters working. The problem really is when you're using Windows 10 IoT. So what do we get from the default install? Um, you've got your Office, you've got Node Red, which is what we're going to look at shortly. Um, just ba basic set of stuff all already installed in here. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is basically do some uh, just the two basic updates for the system, which would be uh, just to get the very very latest of anything, which is sudo um, apt get update. And that will download the latest updates. Okay, done. Just a few, uh, about 30 seconds to a minute. That's all it takes for that. Now we'll do the upgrade, which will actually apply them. Now I don't know how much it might have, but I think it might take a little longer. Just say yes. Okay, that's the updates done. So as you can see here now, this is pretty much the same as using Noobs, only um, you get no questions during the install or anything else like that. Now what I do want to have a quick look at though is under preference to see if it is using the same default Raspberry Pi configuration and see what that settings is. So let's just go into this. And I'll just zoom in on that so that you can see a little easier. Okay, so as you can see here, um, the host name is defaulted. It's defaulting to the desktop login as Raspberry Pi user. Uh, overscan enabled and racetrack. Um, expand file system may not have been done yet automatically. Um, we'll have to have a look at that. Interfaces, SSH is automatically enabled. Serial is automatically enabled. So the all the default settings for everything is the same as with the noobs install. Uh, what won't be the same is probably the locale and time zone and things. Uh, yeah, this is picking you English for the country, so Canada. Um, that will be fine for there. The time zone, of course, will be different, so let's just go change that. So I want to pick Canada and pick location Eastern time. Say OK to that. And my keyboard, once that comes back to me, I want to set to English US, not English UK. Now I'm using a Macintosh keyboard on here, so that is one of the options, I think. Yep, English Macintosh. So we'll pick that one because that's what I have connected. And we just say OK. And we need to reboot for those to take effect. So I'm not going to reboot right away. Let's go back into the configuration a second. I wanted to just enable the um, interfaces, the SPY and I2C interfaces. Uh, camera I'll leave disabled as I did before and say OK to that. And now we'll do a reboot. So I'll say yes and that should do a nice reboot.
And there we have it. As you can see, Wi-Fi automatically reconnected. Now the network I connected to is using WPA personal, um, not something else. So if you're using a different type of security on it, then you will need to um, adjust that appropriately. The uh, configuration now has been updated. If we go back in here now, we should see those new settings all nicely persisted after the reboot. And as you notice there, SSH and things were automatically enabled as well. Um, so, yep, they're all now enabled. I didn't change that, and these will all be correct as well. So under system, the only other thing you may want to do if you're going to run more than one Raspberry Pi on your network is change the host name to something that will be unique before you configure the next one so that you don't get any issues. Anyway, that is the basic Raspbian 1.5.0 install without using noobs. As you can see, overall, much, much faster than using noobs once you've completed the download um, because the image is basically it does not have to be expanded onto the file system or anything else. Uh, oh, that was something I wanted to just quickly check, of course, which was the um, expand file system. I don't know if it's already been done or not, so let's just click that. It's now been done, so now we just say, OK, we'll reboot again. So we should have done that before. It's because when you copy it on, it's uh, I've got a 16 gigabyte SD card, and of course the image that we put on from the downloaded .img file is only 4 gig, so this will now uh, theoretically allow us to have the full 16 gig of the SD card available to us. And there we go, back to the full screen. Anyway, that completes the installation of Raspbian without using noobs. As you can see, far simpler. Configuring the Wi-Fi, um, automatic network connectivity, automatic detection of all of the pieces that I had connected to the Pi. Uh, very, very simple, very little to do. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, in the next video um, regarding Raspbian, we're going to load up and investigate Node Red. So, uh, that will be the next video that I record for this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, very short, very brief, and uh, straight to the point. As I say, I wanted to just do the comparison between using Noobs and using Raspbian directly. And as you can see, for the uh, more experienced user, going directly with Raspbian is far simpler and quicker. Uh, well, I wouldn't say simpler, but it's, it's very, very simple and very, very quick once you've done the actual download. Okay, bye.